The new FNAF patch is officially here. I know some of you may be scratching your heads just looking at the date of this thing because it was supposed to release early February. But either way, we are finally here and we're going to go over what is going to be changing as well as a little bit of discussion as what their effect on the title is going to be. As even though a few days ago I made a video about the older patch information, there's tons of new things added to give an insight to some more things finally solved. Also, I'll link the patch notes in the description so you can see them all because there's probably way too many to talk about in this video. Join my Discord link in the description. I'll be chatting there as well. So the first thing I'm going to be covering are the platform wide fixes, meaning the things that are going to be changing for every single version, no matter if you're on PC or PlayStation. So the first thing is an added save station that can be used in overtime located in the atrium second floor. Also in regards to saving, there will now be a limit of 50 manual ones across the game. Something else we knew was supposed to be coming previously has also been added, like the ability to skip most cutscenes, which is super nice as things get incredibly annoying waiting for cutscenes, if I'm being honest. Also, there's going to be some new color coding across the daycare and parts and service to make things a bit easier. There's going to be extra loading screens, balancing to the staff bot stuns, along with the addition of comedy bots comedic routine. Springtrap's boss battle is supposed to be more balanced, along with other balancing changes to this game's layout like extra hiding spots in the lobby. Moving on to bug fixes with all platforms, there's a lot. Some notable ones include the fixing of the misc button in the inventory, they fixed an issue where you could not get caught by Chica if you went the wrong way in Get Out, and tons and tons of other bug changes that just make the game run better but I won't bore you with too many specifics as most of these are supposed to be more subtle changes that you shouldn't ever really notice here on out. There is one bug change that I think is like a big game changer and it's improvements to the AI pathing because apparently this is supposed to be a big bug change and it's something that was one of the more game breaking parts of this title in my opinion so I'm glad to be seeing that being rebuilt. By far the biggest bug fix that's going to be coming however is the countless clipping patches. I mean as I have and will talk about they fixed the UI, gameplay, loading, cut scenes, all that, but the best change coming to all platforms are these clipping glitches, at least in my opinion. Because while the other things are pretty annoying, clipping gave people the ability to speedrun the game or get themselves stuck in all sorts of ways. I mean, I saw a video in the game's first 24 hours of release that detailed how to beat it in under 5 minutes. And throughout the video, for the most part, the main tactics used to speedrun this game were clipping ones. So now, at least depending on the version's limitations, speedruns and other ways of breaking the game should be entirely defunct. Going on to PlayStation, exclusive stuff for the PS4, there's supposed to be some slight brightness tweaking, and they apparently fixed pretty much every issue with loading and crashing through cutscenes and such. As for the most part, PlayStation 4 suffered a lot from performance issues as it's a pretty low quality console in comparison to the rest of these devices, those of which clearly being the devices security breach was optimized for. The PS5 has had a lot of similar fixes throughout it as well, mostly just a few balancing and speed changes along with other UI fixes exclusive to that console. Those were all the specific changes I wanted to address, but there's a lot more things that I didn't talk about, so make sure after this video to go check out the patch notes to learn some more. I've actually seen some people complaining about these fixes a slight bit, by the way, which was sort of weird. These people actually still want there to be these glitches because it makes the game go crazy in all sorts of different ways, which sometimes can be funny and I understand that. But realistically, for most people, this patch should be a good thing because it means we can expect fixes for all sorts of bugs, including borderline traumatizing ones like how apparently you could be jump scared while in the end game credits. But anyway, while going through these patches, notes, honestly I'm seeing quite a bit of hope for the FNAF team with improving the game even further, especially when considering this all came in in just one update. I can't really find too many things that were talked about when the game first came out that weren't addressed here. There were a few things that Steel Will addressed weren't going to be fixed in this exact patch because they didn't want to delay it anymore, which sounds oddly familiar, but regardless they said they're still working on them and there's set to be one more patch for things like decreasing the game size, but besides that I can't see too many issues with this patch at least in my eyes. I mean honestly just reading through all these bug fixes, I'm finding out about certain things that I didn't even know were issues. For example, there's a bug fix fixing an issue where two chicas were spawning inside of the map at certain times. Like, I knew the game was buggy, but these bug fixes give more of an insight than ever as to how freaking buggy everything turned out to be. But hey, they're all fixed now, so shouldn't everything be okay now? Well, I don't want to just regurgitate what I've said in my previous vid about these patch notes, but to summarize my thoughts from there, I don't know how much this patch will actually matter in the grand scheme of things. As, let's be real, it's coming out three months after the game had released, which is an absolute crazy amount of time to go without an update, especially in a day and age where there's usually like a day one update to fix some of the game's immediate issues and then rolling out real patches periodically. So in my opinion, these fixes are cool, but I'm not expecting them to save the game and its reputation. Because I mean, when people were excited for the game, it came out buggy and everyone was immediately disappointed. So honestly, all these bugs and poor polishing is how this game's gonna be known for among other games like Cyberpunk. At least, 
least that's what I thought. Because while it is true that this game's reputation is suffering heavily right now from these bugs and has borderline turned to horror game comedic, it's super easy for anyone with a PC or PlayStation to complain about it since we can actually play it. But last time I checked, Security Breach has an exclusivity deal ending here soon with PlayStation. In fact, it may already be over since it's supposed to last three months. So with that being said, even though the initial launch was bad, we are long past that. And we still have two incredibly large untapped markets in the Xbox and even the Switch, which has already surpassed 200 million sales. These people, besides the memes they may have seen, of course, don't know about a buggy security breach. So I feel like I have a good idea on what the developers' plans are with this patch. They spent three months taking both their own testing and community complaints to note down bugs, and throughout that period, they solved at least all the notable ones that they could find. And while when I'm making this video, the patch has only been out for a couple minutes and I can't confirm how well all these patches will actually work, it's safe to assume the game's gonna be a lot less buggy than it was before. And funny enough, the rollout of this patch just so happened to be in the exact period that the PlayStation deal was set to end. So basically, what I think is going on here is that before they try and dive into other consoles like Xbox or Switch if they can even fit it on there, they're planning on fixing all the bugs that they currently have. And now with most bugs being fixed, I think the developers could be putting their efforts towards expanding the platform of this game with all the past glitches and issues being behind them. It seems to make a lot of sense because let's say a few months from now we get an Xbox port or even a Switch port, those things will bring tons of new life into the game. New life that won't include any bugs and be the launch success that Steel will never actually had. I don't know. Maybe I'm being way over dramatic about this situation and wanted to be planned out strategically or whatever and Steel Wool most likely just took their times to fix things, but regardless, Security Breach is finally better. And I've seen many people saying that they didn't want to buy the game yet for how buggy and unplayable it had seemed. So to those people watching this video, this may be the time to finally give the game a try and potentially even save Security Breach and its legacy. Some other slightly unrelated things I wanted to note was the upcoming DLC, because that's been the hottest topic in the Security Breach community since it's probably the closest thing to new game content that we're gonna get for a little while. Something that had sort of been talked about a lot with this DLC is whether or not it'll contain cut content in Security Breach. Because if you weren't aware, one of Security Breach's issues was the fact that it was so rushed that the developers had to cut huge amounts of the game's content to be able to finish it faster. Which honestly seemed like the right decision because imagine how buggy this game would have been if they had that extra stuff added. But what people have been wondering is whether or not this game will have that extra stuff added through DLC. And I'm pretty sure from what I've seen, while we don't know too much about the DLC besides some surface level confirmations, there most likely will be a little bit of it, but it'll also be a lot of new content as well. And along with the ports for Xbox or Switch, I imagine what Steel Wool will be working on next after this patch will be some brand new stuff for the DLC. I just hope that whenever this expansion does start to be rolled out, it comes out at least half patched, and Steel Wool should have imaginably at this point learned their lesson about rushing something like this. But honestly, with how small of a team Steel Wool is, and with their really unstable track record with an amazing VR game and the sort of mid-tier security breach game, it really will be a toss-up because we've seen them make some really cool and fun FNAF games along with something like what we have now. But either way, I think we can finally put the bugs for this game in the past and start to focus on the actual future of FNAF. So get ready for the franchise in the future, leaving these past issues behind us finally. And while you're at it, go check out this video I made talking about everything we can expect from FNAF in the future with tons of things to look forward to. Once again, join my Discord, subscribe for 100k and peace.